Everybody, a warm round of applause for our, uh, our guests, Alchemy Labs. And then if you guys could each introduce yourselves, that would be cool. Sure. If you, haven't, you don't have enough microphones, you might have to lean over it's, a bit. We can share. We, we, can, we can lean. Uh, we're shouters. We're, we're shouters. <laughs> what cardinal direction is this? We'll go, we'll go east to west or we're something like <laughs> north to north side north. to side. Uh, so my name is Alex Schwartz. I'm the CEO and janitor of Alchemy Labs. Um, six years ago, I started the company, and we uh, have been building indie games and uh, for mobile and Steam for uh, yeah for a long time now. And uh, used to be on the East Coast. We uh, kind of started building a studio here in Austin two years ago, and now we've got everybody, most everybody here. Um, and we do now a ton of VR stuff. That's our bread and butter. Um, we're known for Job Simulator is the game that we uh, released and are continue to, to release <laughs> on multiple platforms coming soon. Um, and we're working on Rick and Morty Simulator. And uh, I I started I guess writing half the code and being you know uh, doing that kind of stuff. And now um, I just yell at people. I guess is my day job is mm -hmm. to yell at other people. <laughs> no, um, You're very but, good at it. Yeah, yeah, and janitor work. And clean up after and, the moment. Right, right, right. That's, that's me. Yep. Um, I'm going to steal this one. Uh, hi, I'm Cy Wise. Uh, I am the resident owlmancer at Alchemy Labs. Um, we're a pun-based company, so everything has some jokes or, or puns associated with it. Um, I do kind of all of the things. The, the joke is that if you don't really know how, how to do the thing, you give it to me. Um, I basically do anything that doesn't involve shoving something directly into an engine. So I do PR and marketing and all of that extra stuff around the office. So. I'm Andrew Eike. I am producer slash engineer slash uh, alleged certified adult. So, but trademark. trademark. <laughs> that, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, I'm Max Burtis. I'm an engineer, designer, and meme curator, as it turns out. So he's got the dankest memes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Devin Reimer. I'm a chief technical owl at Alchemy Labs. This is my best company photo that I can find. I don't, I don't know where our full company photo is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's us standing in the wilderness at Devin's house in Canada. Uh, without coats in winter in Winnipeg. So there you go. I see at least one coat. There's a, yeah, I mean, we all look chilly. <laughs> so we have a number of strange behind the scenes um, clips of how things have gone wrong over the years building VR stuff. We've got uh, our brains that are filled with strange pieces of information. Um, we've got Wiley who can ask us various Questions, I'll uh, defer to you how you'd like us to. I have the trailer of Job Simulator, which I guess maybe I'll let's step back even farther. Who here has tried VR? Awesome. Nice. Nice. Uh, who has had the chance to try out uh, Job Simulator? Okay. So cool. It's a large group of people, so that a lot of these weird behind the scenes stories will actually land. So that's good. I and I think a lot of people maintain that Job Simulator is maybe the best first VR on room scales, maybe the best first VR experience for, for anybody. Very, very good. Good stuff. Thank you. Clap for ourselves. Yeah, do we clap for ourselves? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you just clap for the person to the left of you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. No. <laughs> clapping. No, no, no. Devin, you don't. You don't. No, no. You don't clap. You have to somehow clap for Alex over there. <laughs> yeah. Complete the cycle. Man emotion. Man. So maybe tell us a little bit about what you guys were doing before you got involved with VR, how that happened, and then how it led up to landing such a major piece of IP for your new project. Sure. Um, I have a whole folder of talks <laughs> that I've given, and so there's going to be a slide with all of our previous games. So... Uh, while I open that up, Devin, if you want to kind of go through what stupid series of events led to us doing VR, because it was a lot of stuff prior to that. Um. Yeah, so um, very early on, um, so Alex started um, Alchemy Labs, and at the time I was also running a video game company, and then we would hang out at Unites and stuff like that, and then we decided to merge forces, um, and that was around the time of uh, uh, the first game, Snuggle Truck. Um, coming out, and then uh, we completely joined forces uh, to make the next game, which was uh, uh, Jack Lumber. 
Ge there's some games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some things did, that we made. You made this. So yeah, we made a whole bunch of things, uh, including discourse um, as of late. Um, and we kind of just kept stepping and getting, uh, kind of building more of a team and more of a skill set. And then that kind of led us all the way to uh, VR starting to become a thing. And at that time, um, the DK1 Kickstarter um, happened uh, for Oculus Rift. And we decided that this was the future and that we needed to drop everything and do something for this. Um, and the first thing that we did was uh, there was a game that uh, we had built um, with Deja Bon um, called Ah uh, for the Awesome. It's a base jumping game. And we were like, okay, maybe we should take that and see if we can bring it to VR. And um, it took us one day to actually uh, implement VR into uh, Ah for the Awesome. Um, it took another 30 days to make it not horrifically bad. Um, so uh, what was interesting is that we went and I actually made the whole game. Oh, oh no. Did it stop? Yeah, it stopped. Uh, oh, no, but why? Uh, but we have videos. How about now? It should be going. Oh, wiggle it's thinking, thinking super hard right now. All right, so I was going to do an interpretive dance of what's being on the screen right now. Okay. There we oh, go. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this looks totally nauseating. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we actually spent a lot of time trying to um, to handle that. Uh, we actually came up with a few interesting approaches when it comes to how to look down, but not completely look down. Um, we were actually the first non-Valve um, VR game on Steam, um, and. A lot of people uh, came to know this game because it was the first game in VR that you could play start to finish all in VR because we actually built menus in VR. And at that time, people were like, oh, no, you just go to this part of the game and then you put the headset on. Um, so it was a very interesting experience. Uh, we learned a lot about what to do, but I think more about what not to do. Yeah. Um, and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, from a locomotion standpoint, uh, we're firm believers in not artificially locomoting people around um, because it does make people nauseous. Um, but this game actually is not as bad as it appears on the surface um, because we made a lot of very smart decisions. It's still not great, though. Yeah. Also, I it mean, seems like having a constant force that's that's being exerted on you, like gravity, probably isn't as bad as pushing a joystick around and, and feeling a disconnect between a fake body yeah. and a real body. Very much so. Um, it's constant uh, velocity downward. Um, and once you start, you're almost instantly at velocity, which makes things better. Um, and you're only moving um, laterally left and right, um, up and down, which is like the other way. Um, so it ends up making it feel better. But... Um, it definitely was not what we wanted to build um, in VR. We wanted to make stuff that everybody could play, and it was not that. Yeah. So, I mean, the evolution of that was basically this uh, headset back at Steam Dev Days. Um, Valve brought us in and showed us this room, the, the Valve demo room, uh, and it was a proof of concept for where room scale VR could be and what could happen, uh, that you could actually walk around uh, in a space uh, and you know, they have these strange fiducial markers on the wall, like QR codes of strap, you know, was pa pasted all over the walls, which was not a consumer thing that could ever happen. But this was their proof that uh, with good tracking, standing in VR could actually uh, give you presence in another world and kind of came out of that demo. I think the two of us uh, decided that was it. We were, this is the path that we're going to bring all the games that we're going to work on from there on. Uh, we finished up discourse which we had done a kickstarter for and said that that was the last game that we would ever make that was for 2d monitors we, we didn't even know what to call like the concept of a 2d game because there's 2d games and 3d games but then there's vr games and it, it doesn't even we're like okay games on 2d monitors we're done to going vr only we were so sold we drank the kool-aid super hardcore <laughs> um and then basically built job simulator um after we were told that um Valve was going to be making a headset that allowed for the use of hands um, and tracked, a tracked head. Um, and it turned out all these multiple platforms are now going in that direction, all three of these. Although technically you did make another game for a, two, for a 2D screen because there's Flappy Bird inside Job Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> 
Shut it all down. That might be relevant yeah. to show the trailer so that you know what the heck he's talking about. Um, so back to our job simulator trailer. Wait a minute. Can we call them monocular games? Mono oh. uh, monocular. Monocular games. Mm. No, because you know. still got two oculi. Right. <laughs> what if it was a pirate game and you only had one eye? And oh. is that a monocular game? Is that count? Or, monocular. You know? I don't want to spoil the bad uh. game pitch session coming <laughs> up there. Uh, so here, here's Job Simulator, just so you know what the, what's going on here. Hello, human. Welcome to an accurate simulation of Office Worker. Time to jump. There's the computer. This looks like it'll taste interesting. Delicious. Oh no, the boss bot is coming. Hey, human, you been doing a good job. Looks like I've got some money to blow. Shred everything for legal reasons. Today's not your lucky day, pal. Open that safe. Holy smokes, this is way too loud. You've been doing a really good job lately. I think it's about time you got a promotion. Hooray, it's five o'clock. <laughs> Woohoo, it's time to go home. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask you to come in on Saturday. And then wherever that was, uh, oh, right there. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So inside of virtual reality, the most advanced technology, you never, can walk up to a never that Commodore-esque score. monitor. The score is 668. Oh, it's, that's, that's really high. high score. That's a really <laughs> high score. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Our trailer guy, Kirk Gardner, who uh, probably a lot of you know, has done like basically all of the best indie game trailers. Uh, I think it was, was he acting or he was filming? He had someone else in his house playing Job Sim. He did both. Them. He did, okay. He's everything. But, but yeah. So There's maybe that's his score. Too. That might be Kurt's score. Yeah, it could be. But yeah, but yeah. you could play Flappy Bot. Flappy Bot actually. Yeah, let's not, let's not get Flappy us all bot. into a Sorry, legal guys. battle here. <laughs> <laughs> it yielded a very interesting moment for me. It was I was testing it. And uh, you know when you play a game for a long period of time, you kind of forget that the world exists around it. And I got so entranced in it that when I stepped out of it, then I realized I stepped out into a VR simulation, and then I would step out of the VR. Um, so it actually kind of like transcended men multiple levels into uh, into the game. Do we have a word for that yet? When that inception is inception. it inception? There, the, um, it's not really the time, but that that story about the power going out in your basement, I think, is a good one. Just randomly, because it's related to that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, in the very early days, um, we had very early hardware, and it was in the basement of my house. And I was uh, doing some uh, VR testing in my basement, and I was in the middle of doing something, and all of a sudden, the headset just went black. Um, and I was like, whoa, okay, something, something clearly went wrong. And then I took the headset off, and it still was black. Um, because it was night, and we had a power failure in my house. Um, so I was, like, standing in the middle of my room, what I assume was my room, that I hadn't been transported somewhere. Um, but, yes, I was in that. So I kind of fumbled my way around, not knowing if I had taken off enough levels of headsets. <laughs> That's like the, am I... Is this heaven? Like, am I dead? Is yeah. this, this is it. So without derailing you guys too much, on that note, uh, has there been much, like, health and safety intervention yet with the development of VR? Because as much as I love VR, experiences like that, and I've had some myself where I've played for too long and taken it off and I feel like I'm still playing, I kind of think it's going to drive some people crazy. 
So is that the a touchy thing, question? No, so, <laughs> yeah, so the one thing that so I stories. tell people is like, people are like, should we be concerned about people playing VR? And I'm like, well, just look at the developers. If the developers start <laughs> freaking out and rolling around on the floor, <laughs> yeah. you know, because we've spent way more hours than any person could ever spend in VR at this point. Yeah, Sorry. do you guys uh, have any estimate on like how much time you're spending in VR? Like per day? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, what, what can you, can you give us a time frame? I think, yeah, I think it depends on whether or not we're like actively developing or we're doing other, because you still have to do business. Um, <laughs> lo and behold. Business. Uh, biz, business. Uh, but if we're doing like active coding, it could be somewhere from like on and off four to six hours. Right? Max, I mean, you'd probably be the other person. Though. Yeah. I mean... Some of it, the biggest problem I've had, honestly, is just like your eyes get a little bit tired. And that's more because when you're developing, especially, I spend so much time like, okay, out of it, change a number, back in. And that's just like kind of over and over again. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like spending so much time in there that you, you know, <laughs> start going crazy. I don't think I've really had. I mean, people go, people go uh, crazy doing regular development yeah, on regular so models. It's really not any worse than that, I would say. <laughs> all right. I did, a, I'd been testing all day and just basically been the headset all day long uh, for a pretty long day. Afterward, I went to the grocery store on the way home and they had all that fluorescent light and the fluorescent lights were flickering. And I was convinced that wasn't hitting frame rate. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, I mean, that's happened. But not craziness, right? <laughs> That's I, mean, I mean, would you? Would we really know? <laughs> <laughs> We're counting on all of you to assess yeah, our yeah. sanity would here. Exactly. <laughs> We're just going to ask you, and you guys can tell us. I definitely. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, it's because we were porting something, which we've realized is a terrible idea. Built taking something that didn't start out as a VR project and then go, let's make it in VR. That, that was our proof of that being a terrible path. <laughs> and building from the ground up is what we did next, and then that worked out really well. What <laughs> get it down to? Uh, it's like so like, as far as like, well, we throw out so much stuff during right. the development of a new game. It's, um, I guess the easy way to say it is, when you're building regular games, we have 30 years of design experience like in the industry of like video games that we could draw from and say hey uh, maybe we'll take this type of mechanic or let's look at how this game did X and uh, you kind of have to if you're trying to build VR uh, I, I hesitate to say like correctly but like basically building for the platform and trying to build for its strengths you have to basically you have to throw out everything kind of you've learned in the design space before and start anew and so we've got what two years of uh, you know content to look back on and maybe Maybe that's uh, a bit like but over, over. But there um, are things that we're like dead on convinced are going to work. We're like, this is going to be great, and it's yeah. the worst. And then there are things like the mouse. You guys were talking about that. Yeah. In that, like and we've got all of our videos of like yeah. things that have gone insanely wrong. Um, but yeah, I would say there's seven or eight iterations on everything we do, with the first six being garbage. Sometimes you hit on the thing, you know, first try, but. Uh, you also don't even know if you got it right sometimes um, because it's not you that are that's assessing like quality or ease of use or accessibility and you have to bring in new people have them try it and then once they get used to it they're kind of almost useless to you as a tester you know <laughs> like there's banging on a build and trying to get it to crash but then there's is it understandable from a first test standpoint and that you can't ever recreate unless you just get new people who've never tried it before. Yeah, it's very much a sliding scale. Like once you get past that initial, hey, this all works, we're hitting frame rate and everything, it's a sliding scale of um, how good it actually is. Um, and a lot, has, a lot of that has to do with each person that's playing. They bring a lot of different experiences, different body types. Like it's like, oh, there's somebody that's really short versus really high. It's all, you can essentially have a situation where you have somebody play through and it's just perfect, seamless. And then the next person goes up and they have different um, knowledge base that they bring, different height. And then all of a sudden it's like, that was a terrible play playthrough. Um, so it ends up being a bit of a sliding scale where you're constantly just trying to watch people and then see what they anticipated or what they didn't anticipate or how can I handle that situation better. Mentioned about having to throw out 
all this knowledge and not having a lot of VR to go on. Did you guys ever do any research on the VR stuff that has been going on in the past 20 years? And did you find it useful, or was it the technology is different, or something like that? It was about, like, super not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about like yeah. '90s military, like weird giant thing on your head VR? Or yeah. Like Disney Quest or yeah, like so. Well, this is paradigm that uh, like, if your brain hasn't accepted something as tr as truth, um, then you can l overlook a lot of things that would have um, that, that you say like, okay, it feels okay. Uh, like for example, on the DK1, the original developer kit for the Oculus. A lot of people said that they were fairly okay with like moving using a stick and they didn't get sick uh, from that. But, and there's a ton of people who, who did feel sick and uh, we're, I think we, yeah, a lot, a lot of people. But uh, when the like, if you look at the progress bars of optics, frame rate, tracking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, if they're all below the threshold that your brain says, whoa, this is truly an experience that I'm living right now, you could, it can almost shut off that realism. Uh, it it kind of clicks off. And so you can accept more. And so it turns out those people who have are like okay-ish with artificial locomotion, it gets worse and worse and worse the better the headset. The higher the quality, the more your brain is accepting it as truth and then you're violating core principles of like your ear, your inner ear and your motion and stuff like that. So I think a lot of the research that we did in the past was running at such low frame rates because we hadn't yet had the hardware to like pull off 90 hertz and to do X and Y and Z that a lot of the tests that were done were under flawed assumptions uh, because we weren't just hitting that pure, we weren't getting presence and therefore we go, hey, does this make you feel sick or does this make you feel sick? And like you could do all these A-B tests, but if all of it makes you sick in general because we're not, or all of it doesn't convince you, then it's a flawed test to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Like in early conferences, there was a lot of people there that were like, I've been doing VR for 20 years and uh, over time discovered that those were generally the people that had the worst advice. Um, wasn't all, but it generally was, and it was just that thing where if all the research you've ever done has been based on um, things that were slightly flawed in the past, you can start assuming, making assumptions in incorrect directions. Um, but on the flip side, people that were new to VR didn't come in with these same assumptions and were willing to try to try different things, see how different things were. I've been told things like, oh yeah, you wouldn't be able to spend much time in VR at all because your eyes uh, would start causing problems because of flicker. And it's like, well, uh, low persistent display solved that problem. So that's not really a thing we need to be concerned about anymore and stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of the arguments are also about sickness. Um, we've gotten over, we, we believe, that we've gotten over this like physiological bar where the brain now accepts that it's truth. And so now uh, we think that VR sickness is a choice uh, for that developers are making in the content that they create in the sense that if you do something that has one-to-one -one motion, if I step a foot to the left in real life and I move a foot to the left in VR, you're aligning everything with what you expect. And if you put someone on a crazy roller coaster that spins you around, uh, you're inherently mismatching the fact that I'm sitting or standing in a room with what my eyes are seeing. I'm moving at 90 you know, miles an hour and spinning. Um, and it's you know, kind of the reason that some people get sick reading a book in a car uh, is that you're seeing mostly static and yet your, your uh, ears are saying I'm turning, I'm moving and all this stuff. So it's kind of the reverse of that. And so this is mostly design decisions we're talking about, not uh, not technical anymore. Because St Steam, for instance, doesn't they, don't they like have a very strict like frame rate that you have okay. to hit, or they they won't? Yeah, no. mm -hmm. yeah I mean, yeah, the ninety frames a second on uh, Vive, for example, is like that's what you need to do. Um, but even as a developer, you can mess that up very easily. It's very easy to all of a sudden, oh, if you do X, Y, and Z, all of a sudden you get really poor frame rate. Um, so it's it's definitely, it's that, it's that choice. It's the developer has to put in that hard effort to make sure that uh, under no circumstance we ever make anybody sick. Yeah. Uh, no. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Jen has a question over here. Yes. <laughs> how do you do it? How, how do you, like, it's not a thing that I ever thought 
thought about with VR until I saw it implemented in your game. Um, how do you change the, how, how, how? Yeah, it's basically for, for, responsive space design. First off, that's a great, like, plant question. Like, I should give you the $20 right now for, <laughs> se setting, for setting that up. Because we always say that we did that so that no one would have to care about or notice that. You know, like non-developers, like, you just launch the game, and depending on the size of your room, you just get a great experience, and nothing's unreachable. It just works where you are. And so we're like, yeah, the unsung, you know, yep. work that we did to make that happen, no one will ever call it out. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, if, I'll scroll to slides about it if you want to talk, if someone yeah. wants to talk about it. Should do that. Um, uh, that? Yeah. Sure. We remade each level at, at multiple sizes by hand. Yep. Every single level is built uh, multiple times uh, and hand arranged because there's no, like, uh, yeah, the story we always say is like you can't just scale a room down. If you uh, the laundry room example, right? Like so yeah, like the laundry room example is that if in real life, if you have a really big laundry room, generally you'll have a side by side washer and dryer, um, and that's fine. Um, but if you have a small apartment, then you end up having a vertical one. And it's not that they just took two wa a washer and dryer and stacked them. They're literally different machines. Um, and so that's what we have to end up doing is like going and recrafting um, those layouts. And we built quite a few tools that allow us to uh, more easily do that. So essentially it'll dynamically um, allow us to drag things around. But essentially at the end of the day, it's a game designer going and laying out the scene and then determining, hey, the modeler needs to actually do a new model for this thing. Or this, like for example, in the kitchen, um, when you have a larger size, you have a microwave behind you. Um, but when you go to the smallest size, uh, there's not enough room for a microwave. And so there's a tool chooser on the front. You turn a dial and then the microwave comes up. That's a radically different design because that goes in and affects the entire gameplay from everything from the job board that's telling you the tasks. The job board comes up and says, oh, you're in a size right now where the microwave is underneath the counter. I need to notify the user that if they haven't turned to that, that that's something they should do. But if I don't have that uh, microwave in the counter, I can just tell them to open the microwave. Um, so it's one of those things. It was a, a ton of work, um, but I think that it is incredibly important. And I haven't really seen uh, many other developers do it, and I think the reason is is that it's so hard. So I have it, uh, I guess, shown here is the office cubicle at two meter width, two point five meter width, and three meter width. Um, and this is all a little tool that we built in Unity to allow us to rearrange items on the fly based on what we detect. The API says you have a 2.78 meter this and that. And so we go, okay, it falls into the closest without going over, you know, sector. So we put it on medium and then it rearranges everything for us. And, you know, we could have like duplicated our office scene six times or three times. Uh, but then every time you want to make a change, you're screwed. So we built this tool that allows us to save all the deltas between each size. So it's kind of like stored metadata where the the plane should be, the paper airplane should be here on this layout and it should be here on that layout. And um, I think the kitchen's probably the most complicated yeah. one, right? Yeah. And yeah. This, this tool also feeds into the, one, the 180 degree view, so for Oculus and PlayStation. Yeah, so it's not just, we're showing three different sizes here, but that's three different sizes for the Vive. As soon as you take into account um, forward-facing tracking, where you don't want people to actually turn around and interact with things directly behind them, we have to do different layouts even for that. Responsive yeah, design. Yeah, it's, yeah. So the funny thing about that is that uh, we, before we really dug into this, um, I was talking to numerous people about that fact. It's like, how do you handle that? And everyone was like, well, I mean, you just have tags and you resize things. And then I was like, you're all crazy. That can't be the way that it works. You can't just arbitrarily scale things. Um, there needs to be a completely different approach. And this ended up being the approach that ended up working. Is It just takes a lot of effort. There's no magic uh, magic bullet here on um, on laying things out because it's essentially we're building the real world. So yeah. you can see like a completely new shelving unit appears <laughs> in between the grill and the tool chooser. Uh, and that will it show the tool chooser changing here? It should. So there's four items: sandwich, blender, toaster, sink. Now there's five uh, with the microwave because the microwave would have been. 
uh, in kind of like the back right corner. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you'll notice things like under the counter now on the right, there's a bunch of cups that were in the center. Um, it's, it's a nightmare also for testing um, because we have to end up testing all the layouts. And uh, we've had bugs where it was like someone was like, hey, this is an issue with a freezer door sticking open. And it was like, it's not happening for us. It's like, oh, yeah. the two and a half meter size that it could sometimes happen that that freezer door would clip on something else. Um, so yes, uh, it's it, it's a very challenging thing, but uh, I'm very proud of it um, and the work that everyone's done to make that work because most people are completely, utterly unaware that the system exists. Yeah. So much so we get emails from people saying, I watched a YouTube video and someone's kitchen looks slightly different than mine. What's going on? Um, so it's cool to be like, it's, the game just decided what was best for you. Yeah. Risky you guys... click, super risky click. Are you guys, tar you're targeting multiple <laughs> headsets too, right? You guys are doing some non-room scale headsets as well, is that right? So uh, Job Simulator launched uh, on the Vive. Um, in, it was packed in the box, um, and that was in April. And then uh, Oculus Touch launch and PlayStation VR launch, which are coming up this year, uh, will be also day one uh, on those. And that's that's currently like our our so, platform. So then, do you use the, the small layout of these areas for the for the seated VR versions? Um, there is no seated. There's no um, seated. There is no seated. We strongly so, believe that standing with hands is awesome. Um, I do too. And <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this, this pro is, mode. This is editor editor hands. Ed editor only. MLG Pro. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that, uh, that's a tough one because we can't really talk about what their plans are with all the second cameras and what they can do. Uh, but it does ship with a second camera and there's like maybe some detection we could do to figure out how, how the size of your space, but it's, they're still f kind of formulating that. So was the same thing done for little person mode? Are those little person mode? Uh, little, small the, so smaller human mode was a, there's a great story behind that. So when we were building the game, we realized that Designing room scale VR games is a brand new territory where human ergonomics actually plays into a very large part of all of our design processes. So how high do we put the little ticket counter thing that you grab and does that limit like, oh, now you have to be this tall to play the game that we built? Like we've never had to think about the requirements of a game. Usually it's like you need this GPU, you need this CPU. We never had like a, you must be four and a half feet or five feet tall to play the game. Like, and I think I have a little joking slide about that somewhere. But um, it's, it's kind of insane, and um, what happened was we released the game, and we actually set the counter heights to like ADA counter heights uh, levels, and, and thought about, well, it's kind of annoying to always be doing a lot of floor level interactions or keeping your hands above your heads. Like, you don't keep your hands above your head for 10 minutes at a time, it's very tiring, your shoulders and things like that. So we thought about a lot of the ergonomics, and we released the game, and I had a lot of friends who sent me photos of like holding up their small child to grab the little ticket counter in the convenience store. And they're like, they love the game, but they couldn't reach the highest element, so they were lifting them up physically to get that. And I thought, okay, we absolutely need to solve this somehow. And um, just making dynamic height counters seemed like a very tough thing, and we wanted to have a global way to solve it. And so what happens is, and maybe I can actually open it up live. Whoa. Um, let's see. This is the kitchen scene. Let's go to the museum. So we added a little switch yeah, right there. Um, and I'll grab the, the door parent. Open this bad boy. And so I'll zoom in here. So we have uh, our spectator mode. Um, which allows for cameras to view you from a third party or third, third person, and then shorter human mode. And so when you turn that on, which by the way, it is, it's at like a very low height. So if you're kind of down there already and you see this door, you open it up and you find the secret panel of options, uh, which by the way, option screen, menus, all these things that don't exist in VR anymore that you have to invent and figure out how the heck to do. Uh, so we hit this switch. When you do it, it feels like you just became 
twice as large, um, and, or that the world is in a miniature state, and so now you are much taller in comparison. And so it's like, you know those um, little tykes uh, play sets with like that you could flip an egg and it's like a little kitchen. Basically everything turns into that size. And so now everything's completely reachable and uh, we played through the whole game on our knees to make sure that everything was clearly doable. Um, and the amount of people who have sent us little videos of like their uh, five-year-old daughter playing the game and like giggling and having so much fun, totally worth the amount of time that it took to implement and put that in there. Super cool. So, so how does it actually work? How does it actually work? Uh, it scales the camera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I don't have internet, so I'm not going to open up shorter human mode videos because I can't get to them. But I have very cute pictures of various small children trying to reach <laughs> things. Yeah. On email with internet, if I had it. Yeah, unfortunately we don't. The wireless isn't working here. So yeah. Um, the questions seem to be working out very well. If you have other questions, okay. we could yeah. jump on those. Did you have any other ideas for other jobs? Yes. Is it time to go down bad prototype lane? Is it time to go down bad? <laughs> yeah. Um, OK, let's go through that folder and see that if we can figure that out. That was a planned question. That was awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, a lot of windows open. All right, let's see what we got. Did I move away from that? OK. So I have a folder, and it's completely unlabeled uh, to figure out what each of these videos does. Do you want to explain, since I don't have a video of the window washer, you want to explain the fun times involved in our window washing job that we canned? It was terrible. <laughs> um, so it was, you were on um, one of those stands on the side of a building, uh, window washing on a skyscraper, and there was two levers. One would move you up, and one would move you side to side, so you could wash different windows. And this is very early days. Where we were like, what works um, when it comes to artificial locomotion? Um, the answer was not that. Um, it, it was um, to the point that you were getting vertigo because you were up so high. Um, but at one point, I went and uh, moved one of the levers to go up, and I went up high enough that I got to see over the edge of the skyscraper and uh, almost fell down and uh, decided that that was not an experience I wanted to do again. Yeah, I don't have a video of that, unfortunately. Um, but it was a vertigo-inducing uh, terrible thing that we moved on very quickly from. Um, I do have this random video. That's what's that? Oh, ew. So, what is that? This is the default hand from the Leap Motion package back two and a half years ago. And I don't know if, it doesn't really read as well with the flat 2D image, but when you get into VR and you could see those weird ass veiny man hands <laughs> up close and personal, I don't know why the bump map was so intense <laughs> and that I needed like self-shadowing veiny hands, but it was disgusting. And so that, that happened. Just a lot of weird early things. I guess in the, was it development fun? We've got a lot of stuff. Um, our first system for uh, liquid that we started to write. Um, and you could see it goes poorly. Well, it's all in very specific use cases right now. It works at this particular moment at that particular angle. And now it's getting weird. <laughs> That's a little weird. Let's see. So yeah, I was trying to keep like a world up flat liquid sim, but then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, fluid simulation is very, very hard. Um, up to this point in video games in particular, um, everybody just faked 3D fluid simulation because it was very hard to do, um, do well, so generally you didn't have that great of impact um, in the environment itself. So you'd be like, oh, I'm interacting with that cup and the cup would tip and someone would just make a singular animation for that. 
Um, but in VR, it's quite different because you can end up grabbing every object and doing whatever you want with it. Um, so we ended up going down the path of uh, building a uh, what ended up being a very complex fluid simulation um, that ends up being able to transfer fluid between uh, between something that dispenses fluid, between objects, like from one cup into another, um, allows you to do things like um, put a box or some sort of book on top of the cup and then have the fluid not go through, but put, for example, a marker inside the cup and pour fluid onto the marker and have it run down into the cup. Um, and a lot of different crazy things like fluid uh, heat transfer. Um, so, for example, you pour coffee into cold water um, it'll bring down the temperature of the coffee, which will turn from boiling to steaming to um, all that fun stuff. So I think here you're going to put this cup on you. So, yeah, I, I don't know if this video does it, but if you would put the wine in the cup and put it on the, the uh, grill there, it will actually boil. Um, yeah. Ideally, we would have had, like, someone as a human, you know, Vive tester actually oh, right doing here. all the things. Oh, like, okay, <laughs> grab a bottle, do this thing uh, to show it off. Actually, do the interpretive dance of. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, um, there's complex color um, when it comes to mixing two colored fluids together. Um, and all the fluid systems store all the fluids that have been added to it, so you can actually make crazy combinations of different things. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's nice. a weird crash. We used to the break glass. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's no good. Creepy knife. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of problems with knives <laughs> in our game. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is that, was that a Z video? <laughs> yeah. 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 Where's the carrot? Oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a temporary solution. So, let me, let me explain. Um, so, explain the knife is the... Uh, it was such a terrible thing. Um, we had a knife in the original version of the kitchen. But the problem with knives are what they afford. is that, that you should be able to just chop everything and uh much like fire in the game uh knives should do everything you hope and dream that they do but that is almost technically infeasible so we had these cuttable items in the early days we had celery and carrots um and you'd use the knife and you'd start cutting it and we built a system that would determine where the knife hit and it would raycast through it and it would generate two separate objects out of it, so you just split it right down, and it fills in the end caps. You could see, like, texture is actually being filled in the inside, so we've got, like, what's the inside of a carrot look like, being UV'd, and all that stuff. And then, great, I cut a carrot, that's fine, but now I cut it again, and then I cut it again, and I cut it again, and now you've got 32 intersecting tiny rigid bodies shaking and falling through the table, and your frame rate just dipped to 30 FPS, and... Uh, untenable, and so we needed to solve that problem. And the solution in the end, spoilers, no knives. <laughs> <laughs> but we went through a lot of iteration to try to find a real solution. In the demo that we showed at uh, GDC 2015 at the Valve booth, we actually had one-time use breakable knives. Uh, and so we, at, you would get a cut out of it, but then it would smash into pieces. Uh, <laughs> so it was a very Looney Tunes uh, answer to that one. So we put two knives in, so then there was only four objects you could create. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. We got other weird stuff. What is that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the at oh, yeah. attaching. Okay. Your highly valuable time. Oh. Okay. Thank oh, you, you attached a camera to I'll the car to, yeah. to see what would yeah, happen. This is this is you. And we're like, what if? Very good, oh, it's, it drove away with the car. We made uh, a tech called Dangly Bits. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Uh, and you can dangle any <laughs> physics item from any dangle attach point, right? Yep. Dangle yeah. spot. What yeah. are the words? Yeah. Yeah. The... Yeah. It was, yeah. It was 
Dangly bits. It was just dangly bits. <laughs> dangly it, bits. We even got the VO in the game. Dangly bits. Like, yeah. You gotta put some dangly bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when we added that, it was a generic system, and then we realized you could take the exit burrito from the game, and you could dangle that, and then make it so that it left on the car, and then it would you'd be screwed, and it would like you could game break in five different ways once we added the dangle tech because all these required elements we, you could just they would drive out the, the door very strange bugs in our game uh it's very it's much like the um like sims uh change log has anyone seen that it's like you know babies can no longer be born in elevators like this like the strangest patch notes uh that we had to kind of do some strange fixes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a Z? That, most of these are Z recording various bugs. Z, Z's our shader programmer, but he's also a uh, self styled Insane? video producer. Uh, <laughs> oh man, this is old. Oh yeah, the physics simulation for the um, Newton's cradle. So yeah, it fully it's, works if you don't know. <laughs> it's pretty absurd. Was that Z? Yeah, this is before he did the line render parts to show them hanging. But yeah, the physics of that function. Uh, yeah, yeah, it goes, it goes forever. It's dragless, um, and you could take the whole thing and pick up the base and then swirl around all four, and it's you know it's fully affected. Yeah. We had a bug. I almost forgot about this one. Where um, in in the game, in one of the sizes, there was this weird ticking noise, and we couldn't figure out where it was. And I thought it was, at first, the uh, Newton's Cradle, and it turned out not to be the Newton's Cradle. It turned out that one of the balls would end up bumping on the side of a book, and that book would end up bumping on a CD that then would make a ticking noise. Um, so uh, it took us a while to figure out and find that one, and then it was like, oh, okay, now we just moved that a little bit, and now, now we're good. <laughs> oh, my here's God. A, here's oh one that, God. something that was cut that never should have been cut. <laughs> Handshakes. <laughs> Patch it back in. Uh, oh, man. This exists. Should I show this? Wait, no. what'd you ask? Okay. Spoilers. Oh uh, we didn't remove, it was made literally the day we released. Yeah. Like one oh, of our yeah, artists true. was like, hey, check out this thing we made. And we're like, now? Are you serious? Really? <laughs> <laughs> early stapler. This is the early office scene with old job bot and pre-art. Oh, he's got the lines in. Those, oh, the that staples are not affecting the, uh, the Newton's crew. Yeah. Sugar Kid? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Was that the, ba the bad BO that we cut? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll avoid that. Um, <laughs> tomato. Carrie was our like content protector, so we did. Yep. Try, we would every time we would try to throw a few well, of those in, she'd be like, "All ages." Just so you know, I mean, she. Swears like a sailor more than anyone else, yet yep. also plays the other end of the spectrum. Yep. Yeah. Because she lives in that darkness. Yeah. <laughs> she knows its depths. Oh, wires. Uh, they were a nightmare uh, because uh, it would work 99% of the time, and then something like what is about to happen is going to happen. I, th I hope this video. Oh. <laughs> there it is. See, look, that was right on the edge of of ruining your life, but ready? Oh, it's gonna go into freak out mode. There. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, while this seems innocuous in, uh, on a screen, when wires are flying at your face <laughs> at a high velocity, it is super terrifying. Um, so yeah, I think this is someone trying to debug solving that problem. Oh. Really bad. Oh, it was like if you close it in the <laughs> if you close it in the filing cabinet, it would ruin it. Right? <laughs> do I do that? Oh, that's a shame. It's 
It's right there. At what? one point, I had one freaking out so badly, it was whipping around in a helicopter. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and you put out your hands in front of your face, but you're in VR and it doesn't help you. What is that? So, <laughs> this was us doing some performance testing to determine how many wires oh. we could have in a scene. The answer is not that many. <laughs> yeah. So, here's the kind of bugs that you see every single day that, uh, you know, if you're developing a VR game and you're trying to work with physics, this is, this is it. This is the early version of the um, museum. And it was like, cool, I just made an enter job button. Now we're just going to try it out. It's going to work perfectly well. Hit play in Unity. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. W title of this video is "Working as Intended." <laughs> yep. yep. Need something recent. Why did that happen? Uh, oh uh, my God! Zero. Button physics. <laughs> but, so yeah. So the problem is like if you have a, a rigid body, right, which is the the thing it's on, and then like there's another rigid body. It gets really complicated really fast, and. Uh, Buttons, levers, and switches for a while were tough to work with. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of people ask, like, they want to build their own jobs. And I don't think people realize how much, like, setup goes into a single button in our game. <laughs> or, like, yeah. a lever. Anytime you see a lever, there's, like, hours of work that went into just, like, setting up that lever. So <laughs> it's not as easy as a lot of people seem to think it would be. Yeah. <laughs> Age well, inappropriate. We had a okay. Jokes. We had a <clears throat> get myself in trouble. Okay, we we had a, <laughs> we, we sent we sent the vo out, and sometimes the they would come back with jokes, and they'd be like, "Oh, we just threw something extra in there." And so one of them was, which was that that clip that we were like, "No, no, no, we're not gonna show that." Uh, it was like the little girl, they had a little girl say, like, give me all your money, bitch. <laughs> and it was like, what? Why would you put that on the end of that clip? Yeah. <laughs> yep. We had a, oh, the garage had a lot of them uh, with the posters because we had to think of, like, skirt the line mm. jokes that involved, like, lube. Oh, and yeah, like, in the auto mechanic, uh, yeah, the there was the poster mechanic. that says, get your rear end checked, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Gr Grifty Lube is the name of the place. Yeah. yeah. It went through a number of iterations that were all, <laughs> like, no good. Yep. We had a, uh, like, a child bot that was allergic to tomatoes in our game. And I think if you give him tomatoes, he says, like, a cutesy VO line. But we really wanted him to, like, blue screen and fall over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. He says, ew, this, ta ew, yeah, he this tastes like tomatoes. Yeah. I can tell. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? What, what was that? So, um, something that didn't work or was like really unnerving or like nauseating that you would never ever expect. <laughs> um, <laughs> nauseating. So, I mean, we had started on a design that didn't have motion, so that was solved a lot of the nauseating things, but... You think? Um, we had an interesting oh, one fine. in the yeah. office. Um, so in the office, there's a stock ticker. Um, mm -hmm. that goes around the top. In the original version, um, it went all the way around the entire office, and it just kind of moves. Um, but we discovered that if you were staring at your computer um, directly down, the top part of your vision was always moving in a circle. And so essentially, like in real life, if you ended up having that, you would start feeling some vection, and it ended up feeling a little bit nauseating. And it had nothing to do with like VR in particular, it was if you ended up having that in real life, that would be uncomfortable. Um, so what we ended up doing was subdividing it. So there's only a stock ticker on um, the opposing walls. So you could never have in one frame both stock tickers. So you'd always have a solid wall and the, uh, the stock ticker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, I think it's about screen space at this point. You know, like if, if you got up really close to it, this would feel absolutely terrible. Uh, but it's at a distance and, you know, you're in your cubicle. So all these pixels moving across your screen would make you feel ill. Uh, but in the distance, you're, you're good. But yeah, wrapping it all the way around is not good. Automotive also had the, the car when it drives in. It drives in really fast, oh, then no. stops pretty far away from you, and then like slowly moves into your space. It doesn't, it's not going to make you sick. Right. But it's like if, if we drive something that's car-sized at you at like 30 <laughs> miles an hour, 
two inches away from you and were like, trust us. It's <laughs> gonna stop. Well, it's incredible the subtlety, like... Like, I am assuming you'd expect, like, well, we were shooting people out of a cannon, and that didn't work out well. Like, but it actually is just, like, things moving just close enough into your personal bubble, little subtle things that you, we thought as we were designing would be totally fine, and then you play it, and you go, whoa, whoa. Um, those are just unexpected weirdnesses uh, that we find. Yeah, the car spinner has to push the car back before it spins, because we had, in the yeah. original one, it would just spin, and everybody would jump back try to like jump over the spinning hunk of metal. Yeah. We had a we had a version of the spinner that was just like a magnet. There was, we had a ton of iterations on that to try and make it not feel like a whirling death machine. But uh, we had a version of it where a big magnet would like pick it up and then spin it and then drop it in front of you. And it was really cool because when it landed, it would do like a nice realistic bump and like it looked really good. And it was one of those things where like anyone who watched it just like through the editor was so excited. They were like, that looked so cool, that was awesome. And every time you put the headset on, you're like, that was terrifying. You tried to drop a car on my face. So, <laughs> so zooming in on this tiny monitor, <laughs> this was the first prototype test of the car moving system. So let's see, does it come right at your face right here? Yeah, it was sliding towards you as that happened, and so that probably felt really bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, whoop, my bad. See, at one point it went above you, and then you'd kind of okay. lower it, and then you're like trying to get lower onto the floor as this yeah. giant two ton thing came at you. We thought at one point that you would be underneath the car, like, you know, doing actual. That was our original prototype. It's like, what, how do you actually change oil? All right, let's look it up now. Let's do it. <laughs> the the tire uh, bolts and thing was just yeah. absurd. Yeah, yeah. We the went rabbit through, hole. Uh, for those of you who have played, you know that in Job Simulator, you just grab a tire and you pull it off, and then you put a new one on. Well, for a really long time, you had to bolt the tire in first and inflate it. And inflating and bolting it in were both two different tools that you had to grab out of the tool chooser. So you would <laughs> And there, there were four bolts. Yeah, and there were four bolts on each tire. Um, so you would unbolt the tire, you would pull the tire off, you would grab the new tire and put it on. You couldn't inflate it until it was bolted on for various reasons. So that was a big mistake because a lot of people would inflate it and then it would like immediately deflate, which was problematic. So then you had to grab the bolter, bolt in four times, and then grab the inflator and inflate it. And if you think about some of the tasks we have in the game where it's like swap out all four tires and it's like now do it again. And like <laughs> it just was terrible. And so at a certain point we we're like, okay, let's back up on the bolts. So instead you grab an individual bolt and you put it in and it screws it in for you. Uh, and after a while, we just removed that completely, and we were like, okay, so the tire bolts itself in, you put it on, then you grab the thing and inflate it, and then we were like, wow, inflating sucks, so now you grab the tire and you put it on, and it inflates itself, bolts itself in, and so now it's like a two-step process it where it used to be like, like the, 60. The bolt animation like it used to either, right? It used to yeah. like do this whole animated process, yeah. and like, ah, And nah, then that took too long it. to do, yeah, so it yeah, it really went down from like this crazy... 10 step multi part process to just yeah. like stick it on, and that was way more fun. Yeah, I mean, when fun's the goal, I mean, this, right. there's Auto Mechanic Simulator 2016, <laughs> popular game on Steam I, that would want it, every single bolt individually managed it ended down up to the thread yeah. count. It ended, ended up solving my, another my summer problem. car, which is the weird Eastern European version of that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I don't, I don't think anybody's really, yeah. I think we all know what it is going into it. Like we, we all, it's kind of like, I mean, there, I think there was like one thing that anybody was sad about getting cut from Job Simulator and there's like this one car and it like didn't make sense and it like launched <laughs> items and it looked like, oh, what, see, it looked like a wacky, it looked like, <laughs> it looked like a wacky racer's car, but for, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, it's like, you know, it, if the the easiest way to deal with that is we just tell somebody else put it on and like try it and it sucks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. The the one he's talking about was in fact my idea, and it was basically that like Speed Racer as an arch nemesis with all sorts of like fun gadgets and stuff. But the problem you run into is sort of like it stops feeling grounded in this already like weird world, and then that sort of pulls you out of yeah. it. Um, and so a lot of it was just like understanding that and taking a step back and saying like we tried it, didn't work. Yeah, you know. on, a, on a larger scale, we had like, we realized only six months into the project that the fun of Job Simulator emerges from being in very like, uh, let's see, like known environments, pe places that everyone's been before. And so we had these ideas to do like a space station repairman and like a, a, some kind of like high-end 
crazy chemist with lots of concoctions. But the thing is, like, you can't make the jokes that we're making by, like, you know, subverting things. They're wrong, and now they're now they're different in this world when you don't even know what's supposed to happen in that. So the farther you get from, it's not realism. It's like just uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like. It's yeah, yeah. The normalcy, like everybody's, not everyone's been a, a like a cashier at a convenience store, but everyone's been into that environment, and everyone knows like the Apu, Quickie Mart type feel. So it's like it's very at home. Um, and when you go outlandish, that's when yeah, you start to lose some of the grounding of the humor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we cut a whole chemistry lab that we spent uh, many many weeks on uh, after realizing that concept. So it was probably a month month of work and a lot of people. So. You're less inclined to just like sit around throwing objects at, at your coworkers if it's a cool job that you actually want to take part <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think too that oh go ahead, sorry. What's the difference between uh, like car wheels that you don't have to bolt on and like single use destructible knives? Like why is one good and the other one's not? Well one one had a technical well, issue. One well, had an inherent disappointment built into it. Because when you had the knife and you had that infinite potential of like, oh, I'm going to cut all this shit, and then you go and you break it. Uh, the, there's a little joke there that we thought would supersede like that, but it actually didn't. It was the underlying, I had something cool and now I don't, and I wanted to do all these things, and I looked around me, I wanted to cut bread, and I wanted to slice things, and, and now I'm screwed. That uh, sense of disappointment, I think, is the reason that it got cut. Yeah. Which, also, with cars, um, it's really hard to convey a car without tires. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like kind of a fundamental thing that we needed to solve in there. Um, and it just took a lot of iterations and there ended up yielding a, a good answer. So I think considering the game we created, uh, one of the biggest things that we kept saying is it can't feel like work. Like we under, like we get, I get the, the joke and that whole thing, but like if it, and that was ultimately every time we did the, the tires, the bolting on the tires, the same exact thing would happen. We'd say, it feels like work. Just went on and on. Right, so like this is how you repair a car, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost, when, when people first saw the gameplay of typing with two hands on a keyboard that had a zero and a one on it, someone joked and said, this is what little kids think their parents do at work. <laughs> and that's a perfect parallel. It's like, these are... The, the <laughs> The story leads exactly to that. It's what the robots thought on a quick Wikipedia skim of what these jobs were. That's what we're recreating here. And so that's why when you make soup, it just a can pops out. And that's why all these jokes land is that it's just a poor, low-budget recreation of what the true history was. The example we've been saying recently is like, um, well, the Northways with Fantastic Contraption and uh, the gallery, with, when they first showed that, like pulling a backpack from over your head from that gesture of behind there, uh, you know, that could become something like the double click uh, in, in VR because we just, we don't know what works and when someone does something really cool, you go, wow, that was great. And then fast forward 10 years, it, it could be that's the assumed default way to get to a kind of larger inventory of, of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, yeah, the really cool thing about VR right now is how many different people and companies are contributing um, to kind of the mind share. It's like one company will find, oh, this real good gem here, and this company will find a really good gem here. And we're all kind of learning and doing R&D all at the same time. And it's just we try to keep really close contact and communication with everybody and kind of see what's working and not because there's no point in everybody doing the exact same prototypes um, I would much rather everybody doing something different and then we see what kind of cool things come out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you talk at all about multiplayer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to... So, really so um, multiplayer is um, very important to the future of VR. Um, Making it more of a social experience, I think, is definitely a way of the future. Um, that said, it is a very, very hard problem. 
um, in traditional uh, multiplayer games that uh, people play right now, they are very, very expensive things to create. Um, and the market uh, support for VR, there's just not enough headsets out headsets out there to make that possible. And that's just saying if it was the exact same technical challenge between there, um, which it is not. Um, it is much, much harder to do uh, physics, particularly physics-based things um, in multiplayer, in VR, uh, because a lot of the tricks that people used to use no longer work, um, particularly when you have direct interaction in the environment. Uh, it's definitely something that's going to get solved. It's just an incredibly hard problem that on the surface doesn't appear um, so hard because people are like, oh yeah, I kind of done that before. And it's like, you, you haven't quite done it like it needs to be done in VR, particularly with things like 90 frames a second. If, if the person I'm across from is running, looking like they're running at 30 frames a second, that becomes problematic. If a user that's looking me in the eye all of a sudden lags five feet to the right, um, that is going to feel very bad for you. Um, but in a traditional game, it's like, ah, they lagged a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. Um, there is just a, a, a lot of problems to be solved between, uh, between now and a, uh, a good solution. But I mean, it's, it's a, also on that kind of path. There is some games right now, like uh, Rec Room, which is doing some very interesting things um, in the multiplayer space. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see kind of how this all flops out. Awesome. <laughs> so we have uh, like half an hour, right? Is that you want to show some Rick and Morty? Talk about Rick and Morty? Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. Christ. <laughs> what did you forget? <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> so well, we're going to be showing the game uh, on Thursday, playable during the uh, time block of, does six, anyone know? Six, six to eight. eight. Six to it's, eight. Yeah, either five to eight or six to eight. And, yes. in, and yeah. that'll be in the highball. We'll clear the tables out and we'll have... Uh, have some headsets in there. Yeah. Yep. So we're uh, working with Adult Swim uh, on the Rick and Morty VR game. Um, and Justin Roiland is a part of that project too. We record all the VO uh, with our crappy impersonations of Rick and Morty and then send them <laughs> over to him. And he riffs on top of our bad VO and sends it back in a much funnier state. And then that goes into the game. And it's, we're, we're writing basically a, a narrative for the game while mixing it with a sandbox gameplay of the job simulator kind of, you're in a room, you're in Rick's garage basically. Um, and so it's got some of the same ideals, but we're tweaking things and going a little farther uh, with it. But uh, right now we can't show anything other than that five minute demo uh, because, well, the only thing that we've shown publicly is the Plumbus. So I could show the, lo the oh, long yeah. form show, show the version long form. of the Plumbus <laughs> video. That we'll put that in the background <laughs> as we By the way, we, a total non-spoiler thing, but if you think it's difficult to make a job based on like affordances of the real world, put yourself in a universe where anything can happen at any time infinitely all the time and then be like, okay, yeah, let's make a, a VR game that people will understand. So <clears throat> with that, here's three minutes of a Plumbus. Three minutes well, of Plumbus. Well, it wasn't named Plumbus apparently. Oh. Oh, no. <clears throat> with that, here's three minutes of searching the file system. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yep. So here's Rick and Morty Simulator. This is all you do in the game. It has yep. 27 hours of gameplay. We, we, we had somebody essentially doing this in one of our demos. Yeah. And they, <clears throat> they came out and they were like, uh, we were like, cool, you, you really enjoyed the plumbus. And they're like, wait a minute, could you see me? doing playing and we're like yeah you, we're like you play with the plumbus for like three minutes and he was like oh my god i have to i have to go <laughs> but, but your game your game is your game is really cool i really want to tell him we've all done that yeah i think we did i think we tried to say we've all done that i think we tried to say yeah and the, uh, yeah the the, sto the story of this by the way is <laughs> sorry i can't talk over that no just, just let it just let it happen. That's just gonna um, happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we first announced Job Simulator, we didn't have a trailer or a teaser or anything ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th this is one of the first things we built, by the way. This is real <laughs> early on. Yeah. So we we released a trailer of pouring sriracha for seven seconds. That was our first trailer in Job Simulators in the kitchen. 
And so this is an ode to our first Sriracha trailer, mm -hmm. where we give away basically zero information about the game, <laughs> other than it has amazing physics. Yep. How, Sai, you recorded this. How long did it take you? Uh, to do this three-minute bit, it took me 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. so just... Just imagine doing this for 45 minutes. It was, it was so an intense 45 minutes. Andrew's an expert on the plumbus. What, could you describe the various parts? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, the, so, the, so, okay. So what is the, what's the part being um, played with? Played uh, I don't, that doesn't affected. actually have a name. The, 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 okay, so the dick part. The, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. It's You're not, it's not far. that. You've uh, gone too far. So, so there's basically the, the thing with the plumbus is when we had to, like, make it work, we had to rig it like you'd rig a character, right? So we have, like, bones and then, like, a rigid body so it's like when you sh shoot someone in like a first person shooter and they get all like floppy and fall over but it's that with the plumbus so uh the thing the 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 dangly bit is uh is called the the plenus and the part that she's touching right now is called the plenus yep <laughs> and her character artist who created that was like he named those and didn't tell anybody and then we were like digging through the unity hierarchy and we were like Oh my God, that's the What's, greatest. So Z, who, who built this, and uh, he came back to us and said, so he works in a coffee shop uh, quite often, and he said that he was working on the physics for the plenus, and someone walked behind him and was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, it's, uh, it's secret, I can't talk about it. But, uh, hey. Sh should we watch it again? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just keep, just keep looping it. <laughs> If oh, was, like if we had a real version of that? If it was that I feel floppy. like that would be the best, like, plushy of all time. But we needed to have those physics. That's yeah. the, that's yeah, the problem. Know. Right. It would be like $400 to get. <laughs> it's the, the greatest companion. Everyone has one. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any questions while this disturbing thing is happening to us all? <laughs> It, by the way, I, if you're over in the area by the light, I don't think any of us can see you. So just yeah. yell yeah. at us. I can see him. Oh, cool. All right, so there's like people of all ages are going to come here. Like, have you planned yeah. for that? So well, Rick and Morty is a, uh, it's on Adult Swim. It's adult swim and so, so. It's, uh, we're working within the parameters of the age groups that enjoy Adult oh, Swim shows. I, I can tell you this, <laughs> for the, for the five-minute demo, we're pretty okay. I mean, for the, for yeah. the, I mean, this is there's whole still game. The, there's this still a plumbus. Is. Whole game, we're on Adult Swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. We're just good. gonna let this what, loop. Spoiler out. time. It's, let's talk about season three. Here we go. Right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody's yeah. No, no. Attention. Season four. Season four. Yeah, we're off. Our plan was actually just to let this play until everyone was like, wait. <laughs> Why is this still going? And then slowly filter out. I, so. I, will, I will actually say this. When I was recording this, and I actually, I guess, dipped the plenus into the glass <laughs> beaker, I actually wasn't even sure let's, if that was going to work. I was really... Let's go back and watch it. That was maybe... It's right there. there well, let's, yeah, and I, and I swirled it. I swirled it inside. Yeah, right there. I was not sure that was going to work. I was really happy. I'm actually kind of surprised that it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all surprised that it works. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Isn't it already? Network physics. <laughs> Network, yeah. Once that's solved. Asymmetrical. <laughs> Can you say who you're playing in the in the game if it's not multiplayer, or is that also like verboten? Yeah. Like um, yeah. So yeah, the, the things that have been announced. Um, you play as a clone version of Morty. Okay. Uh, because one of the things that was really important to us is to have the uh, back and forth of Rick and Morty, and so if you were one of them, it would be very difficult to have that kind of feeling of being in the cartoon. So it was like, well, we need another character somehow. And so the story revolves around the clone Morty that Rick created for you, or for himself, and goes from there. Mm -hmm. That's a good conceit. Anybody else? We got one over on the side. Is any of the game canon? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I have a great answer oh, yeah, for this. Do. Okay. Uh, according to Justin and Dan, everything is canon. Oh, yeah. Infinite, so. infinite universes. Done. Anything can yeah. happen and must happen. Yeah, everything, everything is, is canon. canon. Yeah. We're so canon. like if he farts, it's canon. We're, canon. Yeah. We're, we're 100% Rick and Morty canon right now. I don't know. Can we 
trying to think. You want to go through some job sim stuff, more job sim stuff? <laughs> we have, have what, a half hour? Um, well, uh, Sony's asked that we start the next block at 5 o'clock sharp, and it's 4.19 right. now, so maybe another, like, 15 minutes. Huh. So we could do also get bad game yeah. pitches. Yeah, let's do bad, bad, bad game pitches. I want to do bad game pitches. Um, so this is actually a game that we play all the time. Um, you kind of have to purge the terrible ideas out of you. Um, so a lot of times if we're hanging out drinking or on very, very long flights, we just sit there pitching our worst ideas for VR to each other. So um, we're going to have everybody actually pitch some of our worst VR game pitches. And then if you guys would like to join in, you're welcome to pitch your terrible VR game design idea to us. And we'll, we'll comment on it. Well, yeah. We're not just going to let them float No, no, no. Comment. We're going to help you make them truly terrible, yeah. which is part of the yeah. fun. Do you want to? No, I will not start. You won't, I want you to start. No, you start. Oh, you want me to start? I mean. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I changed my mind. This is ready? No, no, no. This one, this one isn't. I'll go, I'll go late. I'll go late for this one. Um, so e-books are a thing. <laughs> so, so what if we made an e-book reader that was like a tracked library and you picked up the e-book and then you sat in a chair and then you would read the e-book and flip all the pages. Also, uh, so I, I pitched this before and a few people have added some things. So here's some additional, additional fun uh, achievements. So not only is it an e-book reader <clears throat> in VR, it also, uh, there's a fire. And the fire <laughs> slowly goes out, so you have to read fast enough to throw your pages in the fire, so there's a chance you might miss a chunk of the book. And lastly, there is a globe-shaped bar, and you can drink whiskey, but the words get all blurry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you have to write an essay after it's over about what you read. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll go with my, the, the worst VR idea that I'm really excited with right now is um, uh, VR Red Rover. So you basically run and where all the kids are lining up is right before the chaperone bounds. So yep. you have to get through, but then you have to stop or else, anyways, so that's, that's my, my current favorite idea. <laughs> the wall, you'll stop one way or another. Like stopping <laughs> is going to happen. You cannot win. My, yeah. my favorite, so we used to have, this is, I'm going I'm gonna, to, we used to have a setup in the house that was in the lofts and it was like literally a loft and our track space ended at like a story drop off a balcony. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And yeah, and wasn't there a time where we actually considered, like, because we were slightly too small, we were going to track just slightly outside? No, we of did. The, we did do that. <laughs> no, we did that. I thought that was a joke. No. That we, it was, no, the lofts of VR were too small. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my game yeah. would be called Who Can Jump the Highest? <laughs> 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 and it's based off of the gravity vector of the headset, and so the longer you can keep the headset in a gravity negative arc of, you know, a jumping motion that you would detect, which could be gamed by throwing the headset vertically up in the air, uh, would be the winner. And so I see no problems with that. Yeah. Ship it. Yeah. Uh, mine was, it's a multiplayer game. So you and a friend in a single track space, so two headsets, one track space. Uh, you stand next to each other like this, I'm gonna demonstrate. You gotta link arms like this, and you're playing as a two-headed ogre. So you each have a club, and you're trying to beat each other to death. <laughs> <laughs> Multiplayer achieved. Yeah. There we go. Didn't, didn't you also VR. add to it that you like tie one of your yeah, legs? You're tie yeah, you're gonna tie your legs together. There's another, if you wanna get really crazy with it and throw in the additional uh, you know, artificial locomotion, you're also both <laughs> simultaneously running through a forest. And so together you have to also like dodge tree branches and things together while also beating it. each other silly, yeah. But it's a sack race, because your feet are tied together. <laughs> yeah. uh, to jump over various. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can have, uh, depending on the tech you're using, but like, I guess on the Vive, you could have infinite track devices in any lighthouse space. Mm -hmm. So we, in our office, we have eight headsets on one side and eight on the other, and they're all in one, like, two different sets of lighthouse trackers. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you could do some crazy stuff that I wouldn't recommend. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my idea is, um, so you saw the rope stuff earlier. Um, imagine that, but it's a uh, Christmas light detangling simulator. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you got this giant ball and you have to physics rope untangle it, but then also some of the light bulbs don't work and you don't know which ones. So, right. But there's also... 
family members screaming at you the whole time. Oh, yeah. 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 And you're precariously balanced on a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we could get some haptics in there. Mm. Or some yeah. custom hardware modding, I think, would be good for a jam, a bad game jam. Yeah. yeah. The, the, well, the last time we gave this talk, we had uh, someone from HTC sitting up front. We kept pointing at the at the HTC employee. We were like, "You're gonna do this, right? We got <laughs> you, got us." <laughs> and then he asked us for a serial number so he could void our, our warranties. All our warranties. <laughs> All our warranties. Yeah. Uh, All right, so your turn. Your turn. Your turn. Me and my one. friend Elliot uh, wanted to make a game called Punch Your Family, and it was this. <laughs> It's a simulation of uh, Thanksgiving dinner, but you, you scan pictures of your family first, so it maps them on the NPCs, and then yeah. you, you, know, you can punch them. <laughs> Qu uh, follow on question, is, is this a bad VR idea? Or is this <laughs> okay, all right, here's my bad Pardon. VR idea. A, I just thought of one. Is this one of those uh, therapeutic games? That, yeah, that, it's catharsis. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Heavy Metal Parking Lot Simulator? <laughs> you know that movie? But you have to headbang with your $800 Vive on your <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we could I feel like you queen. didn't even need the pitch after that. You should have just <laughs> said like the name <laughs> and sold. Left Done. it. Uh, not, not a game, but uh, we often joke in the office. Like, There's no camera shake in VR. We don't want to move the head around, so let's just oscillate the FOV rapidly. Like, that's a great idea. Oh, oh the, the great. FOV specifically. Yeah. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. Uh, or huh. a giant haptic buzzer on the back of your head that yeah. vibrates your whole head. I feel like that one wouldn't make you sick. A manual camera. <laughs> a big gyroscope. I'm going to try and the get screen. the microphone around. You got one. So I actually just thought of this. Um, Perfect. Perf it, so <laughs> so um, it's kind of a cross between a uh, job simulator and um, surgeon simulator. It's called Organ Simulator, The Tale of Two Kidneys. <laughs> and it basically, it's the... Uh, it takes on the old idea that like mechanisms have little men in them that are making the thing go, but the human body. So it like the different levels are like you are the kidney and you are a little man inside of the kidney making the kidney go. Do whatever kidneys do. I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm a game That's designer. Irrelevant. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. This, so, wait, this is wait. literally how we created the automotive job. Yes. Like what you're saying we, right We now. had a mandate to not look up how actual cars work. So, uh, so that I know how cars do work because my dad's a mechanic. And then every time I'd bring something up, they'd be like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it would be kind of like Job Simulator, except like the environments would be pulsating because you would be in a human body and it would be like... <laughs> Kind of gross. So are you like on a treadmill and the treadmill and like turning <laughs> little knobs and that's making your kidney do stuff? Yeah, I mean we could we do whatever could get the kidney like a partnership does. with Virtu Virtuix Omni and yeah, yeah. could yeah. be a yeah, there total. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep running or your host body dies. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, way back there. It was weirdly oh, involved. Way back there. Uh, way back in the back. Way back there. Ooh, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got one that's not about urine. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh. This is actually an additional level to that, and it's uh, my routine colonoscopy. Uh, colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> you are the camera. Find the polyps. Ooh. Ooh. You are the camera is a good one. You are the, do you have to do, like, the snake motion? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, do you, lay on wiggle, the, you know? do you lay on the floor and snake through the virtual <laughs> colon? <laughs> Does anybody have an idea that's not a body horror <laughs> game? <laughs> Davey put his hand down. <laughs> uh, I'm reminded of an idea that we there was. A, I was having a conversation with some friends. I'm sure maybe this is has has a has a VR intentional vomit game jam been done? Because that we were we were like passing around ideas for like what would be the best ways to like intentionally get people to vomit through oh, VR. But Bennett uh, Foggy well, did a talk, well, like where he was like, "Hey, if you really want to make someone sick, first you make the background." Move. This was like at the oh, at right, the like micro talks. He's like, first you make the background move, then you make the room spin, but then you make it an oblong room and you're off axis." And then he put it, <laughs> and then he put it on the projector, and you heard the whole audience is like, "Boah!" It's well, like the walls are moving in and out. So I'll, I'll tell you what the what. The one, we, the one we came up with in, in, our, in a conversation with friends that was my favorite was where it's uh, uh, 
you've created like a digital field and there's a bunch of horses around in the field, right? And you're looking through the, uh, through the perspective of one of the horses, except that what we've done is we've taken an actual camera or an actual motion tracker and attached it to an actual horse in an actual field <laughs> that's amazing. just running around. Yeah. So all of your motion is based on what the horse is doing. And then when you, whenever you look down, the horse is vomiting and you look around <laughs> and all around in the field are other horses with, with uh, VR headsets on that are also vomiting. <laughs> And so it was like a, a vomiting horse simulator. Hey, hey, Davey, there's yeah. a seat here for you. It's right here. You should, you yes. should come down. Please come down. Please come down. Please Alex, come down. I hear you've been hiring lately. <laughs> yeah. There's no Interview way. Interview complete. Sign this contract. I'm blinded by the light. Just I can't see you, but please come down. The, <laughs> I'm not joking. Dave, Davey, get on down there. Although we're, we're just at about 4.30. Uh, that is true. So... Oh. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hazing? Right, I mean... All of the, uh, the usual things. <laughs> <laughs> so all of them. Spanking, I heard spanking. Eat Berrios. Uh, Eat Berrios. Berrios? <laughs> you know, all those simulations of spinning and just looking at them. It sounds like the description that Justin Roiland would give. Like, two brothers, <laughs> both with hazing and <laughs> things that would happen therein. Yep. With... The typical hazing elements <laughs> and contained in such element. Like Birios. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be a simulation of what future folks thought the hazing process was, and it was really not even close. It's much worse. It's much worse. Do we, do we have time for one, one more? Or yeah, let's, we can take one more. One this more. better be good. No so pressure. you're a fly caught in a web, and it's an anatomically accurate uh, representation of a spider coming to <laughs> have its lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Does it Shut it down. And, you're <laughs> <laughs> and you have a torch, and you have to choose whether to just burn yourself alive and before it yeah, gets yeah, there. Yeah. And each eye is like 20 lenses. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. But then you look down, and you're a horse vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, warm round of applause for Alchemy Labs. <laughs> <laughs>